Hi, and welcome to the very first episode of Provoke Bites, where we take five to 10 minutes and give you our point of view and perspective on topics that our clients in the industry are talking about. For our very first episode, we welcome Jacques Botha, Provoke Vice President of Engineering based out of Auckland, New Zealand. We're gonna be on the topic of cloud and app modernization. It's a topic that everyone is talking about, even though cloud technology has been around for some time, people are still kind of figuring out exactly how to optimize their investment to extract as much value as they can out of their cloud investments. So without further ado, let's go. All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Provocative Bytes. Uh, today, we're gonna to be talking to Jacques Botha, who is our VP of Engineering. How are you doing today, Jacques? Yeah, doing very well, thanks, Andy. How about yourself? Cool. I'm doing really well myself. Really excited to talk to you today about uh, cloud, uh, particularly in our New Zealand business. Uh, three questions, three answers. It's the format we're going to do on the show. And so I'm going to just jump right into it. What's the number one thing businesses in New Zealand get wrong about cloud adoption? Um, from, from my perspective, I see one of the biggest challenges is organizations thinking of um, from a purely from a cost savings perspective on on hosting, um, you know, sure, cloud drives a lot of efficiencies. It means you can end up with a lower kind of total cost of ownership for some of your assets and applications. But I think where you get the real value from the cloud is driving changes in your business processes and your agility to allow you your business to be more agile, generate more value, move quicker, and actually create value, not just save money. I think that's such an important point, right? Because it really is trying to move IT organizations away from cost center mentality into, you know, impacting customers and impacting revenue. Would that be a correct way to characterize it? 100%. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Cool. Moving on to number two. Why do you think businesses benefit from stronger native cloud adoption? So I think when it comes to kind of cloud native is really again about creating that agility and the ability to create reuse and modularization within the organization and enable different parts to generate value and collaborate through technology um uh you know building these you know the cloud allows us to really rapidly spin up applications scale out um it means we don't have to go through months and months and years of planning we can prototype we can mvp solutions we get to market quickly for internal or external applications or, or workloads um and then really kind of have that iterative mindset full of experimentation um and and lose real world metrics um to to improve and to kind of again generate that value for organizations and, and learn and become a learning uh, a learning organization that's great so why don't I just stick it in a container and move it in the cloud? Because I'm in the cloud. Why can't I realize those benefits if I just do that? You, you will really realize some benefits, but again, it's uh, it's around the people processes that drive this drive it as well, right? Mm. We're going to have some really great agile technologies, and it's that kind of kind of scalable. But if we're not enabling our technology teams uh, to work closely with our business teams to be able to understand our users and our problem statements. Um, enable them to leverage this fantastic tech um, to move quickly, then, you know, you're just, you're just running a data center in the cloud. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> you're not seeing any of that benefit. It really is about enablement, but at the same time, making sure that you've got good governance in place so that your, your, your team can move quickly, but safely, uh, and you kind of got those guardrails in place so that, you know, you're not running to compliance and security issues, mm -hmm. but at the same time, really enabling uh, rapid rapid development, rapid deployment, uh, and uh, enabling teams to be kind of uh, self-sufficient and, and, and drive change organically. Great, great perspective. So this really comes to the, the last and final question, right? Uh, I think everybody knows they need to start thinking about app modernization versus just app migration. We're certainly a big believer in that. Right, and so you've talked a lot about the people, the change, the process, the cultural uh, benefits that you get from becoming a much more agile business that can adapt uh, to the marketplace or to compliance changes that get foisted upon them. So for the people who are out there really trying to figure out, do I do an app migration? Do I do an app modernization? What are some things that they should really think about? Like, is app modernization gonna be that much more expensive? Uh, number one and number two, is there an opportunity to go beyond the technology where perhaps app modernization is an opportunity to optimize the business processes and maybe even the user experience? Do you have some thoughts on that you could share? 
Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so firstly, I think, you know, there's, they're, they're all valid strategies, right? And you've got to assess each workload on a case-by-case basis, looking at the lifespan of that application or platform, you know, the ROI speaking on it, um, you know, what what's this kind of horizon looks like in the technology stack, et cetera. Uh, and sometimes, you know, strap migrations are a valid approach uh, as part of a broader modernization strategy as a, you know, as a stepping stone. Um, but when it comes to app modernization, that's when you see the, the real benefit to organizations, in my opinion. Now, the mistake I see a lot of organizations make in the app modernization space is that, again, they just look at the technology. And sometimes you know, they might fork out a ton of cash and a ton of effort just to move the same application with the same functionality, same poor user experience, just into modern like modern frameworks, modern tech stack, uh, and 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 then move it to the cloud, right? Onto some PaaS services or containers or something like that. Now, you know that's great from uh, I guess a, a maintenance risk perspective. You know, your your all your all your products are still within the kind of support warranty, but you've just spent all this money and not created any additional value for your users. Um, and and often it's not that much you know it's not that much more effort involved when kind of redesigning and reevaluating. You know, the, the, the great thing with app modernization as opposed to kind of greenfield builds is you've got all this data around how your application and platforms are used. Like you know what the pain points are. You know what your users are complaining about. You know the kind of the, the, the sticky points that are causing friction within the business. And as part of that technology modernization, it's a fantastic opportunity to streamline business processes, right? And have actually have the technology be enabling that, not the other way around. Look like, also looking at how you can improve user experience, how you can change applications, how you can drive better integration. Um, you really want to look at your asset holistically and always be thinking for every dollar I'm spending, how much value am I generating for business? Uh, and, and compliance and risk management is just like, a, obviously an important piece of that. But if you can kind of, kill two birds, one stone, and add value and generate kind of better experiences for users, well, why, why not take that opportunity? Sounds really, really good. Jacques, I want to say thank you for uh, taking the time. I know you're extremely busy, but uh, if anybody uh, who is watching this wants to get in touch with Jacques, his contact information will be on the uh, closing screen here. Jacques, thank you again for your time, and uh, we'll talk soon again. Cool. Thanks, Andy. All right. Talk to you later.